Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So on today's video, what we're planning on doing is to prep the dump bed here. Um, we need to work on it some. We got a cut down here on the dump bed. Um, I think we're going to get it right, go ahead and install it on the cart, maybe spray it, maybe add a little mm -mm action to it, and uh, go from there. We might get some other things done on this video as well. But the bed uh, we need to go ahead and get that back onto the cart as well so what we're going to do first thing we're going to do is i'm going to get to cleaning it and uh try to clean it up as best as we can and try to use the plastic welder and try to fix this right here uh portion in here i've, I've hauled sand with it before or dirt once uh when it was stock and uh i was always scared about sand kind of getting back in here as well so i don't want that to happen but it's really dirty and we really need to clean it up so that's what we're gonna get started with So while the bed is drying in the sun, we need to take this metal piece off here. Uh, ever since I've had the cart, it's been dangling like that. And there's only two Phillips head screws currently in the bottom of this. Not sure if they will even go in here or if they're stripped. I don't know, but I need to either uh, move one of these over here, bend it back somehow, or either go to the um, hardware store and buy some more screws to put into the bottom of here because I don't like the way that looks and even though this is a utility cart this is going to be a good looking utility cart uh, similar to just like a little small truck to run around town in Ugh. that one's in there That one's in there too. Good. Great. We can. I don't know if 
with this wrench and do it. I don't have a regular wrench that'll fit it. Nope. It's moving. Not much, but it's moving. All right, so I just got online and looked on the Cushman um, site where uh, you can buy parts for all of these easy goes and Cushman vehicles and whatnot. Turns out that these bolts are actually a quarter 20 uh, thread underneath it and they're 5 8 inch long. I'm going to try to put some PB blaster down into the sides. Maybe it can work its way down into the threads. I'm not sure. Um, it is pretty tight here and there. We did get them to work loose just a little bit, but we're going to see if this right here will speed up the process or will help out some. Um, it's going somewhere, so. Let's talk about this back panel. I've just looked at it more and more and more. I got on to the Easy Go Cushman website to find uh, those bolt sizes of the tailgate. And while I was on there, I went ahead and looked for one of these here because coming up from behind, this looks bad. And I said, you know, how much is it? This is only $22, I believe, or $20 or something like that. And I said, I'll go ahead and order one. As soon as I clicked, add the cart, well, it's out of stock. So I've got on Facebook, I've asked some guys on a forum, so we'll see where that goes, but that's the deal with this right here. If I can find one, I'll replace it as long as it don't have any gouges or stuff like that on there. I just don't like the, the look of this. All right, boys, this may be a stupid idea. Got the tailgate in the uh, bottle jack or the shop press here. I did that so it'll sort of hold it in place while we try to work these uh, two Phillips head bolts loose at the bottom of the tailgate. I know I could probably leave those in there and then go buy two more to put on that end. But if I could get these out, I'd like to go ahead and replace them all. I've got a Phillips head screwdriver. I've got a pair of vice grips on here. Trying to work these right here out. This right here mechanism will just hold it in place for me if it would. And if I have to just kind of go back and forth with it, I will. But she just does not want to budge at all. Tightens up just fine. I don't know, maybe the screwdriver isn't big enough. I don't know. Maybe I'm gonna have to cut a, a slot in there and use a flat head because this right here is just wallowing it out right there. Let's, uh, let's try another method here. I know this is plastic. I get that. But let's just try this here. This ain't the type of plastic you can just heat up and, and uh, 
make it turn back black. That, that kind of plastic don't work there. There we go. We got it out. If y'all can see that there. Anyways. There we go. We got it out. Persistence pays off. Like I just mentioned, be persistent while I have the tailgate into this uh, the shock press. If you look at this right here, there's a bend on it right here, which kind of is like crowning right around here. I'm going to put this in here and see if we can bend this down a little bit or back up so it doesn't crown as much. I think that looks a lot better there. Not much of a crown at all. So yeah, we'll keep that. All right, got the bed cleaned out. It's pretty much dry now. It looks a lot better, in my opinion. Probably gonna go ahead and remove that tag there. Just held on with about five rivets, pull that off. You can see it in the video because the sun's in this direction here. It's still got some, some gray stuff there. But uh, other than that, I think it looks pretty good. Oh, yeah. not bad I don't know if these are fit these are those plastic uh, Christmas trees I think that'd be better that way uh, if we ever want to access it for anything we can without having to drill there we go So that's what that is there. We'll probably keep these and try to clean these up some. Let's see if we can get this right here. Maybe this is uh, screwed in there as well. But let's see. Oh yeah, those came out easy too. Y'all listen to this. There's water inside the tailgate, so I'm gonna probably drill a little hole and uh, release all of that water out of here. Yeah, that's good. So all of these bolts here, I believe are gonna be quarter 20 bolts. There's not many to take out. We're just gonna go ahead and get started and do it. I'm using a 7 16 socket.
got this cordless grinder here. I have a flap disc. All those spots that are where the plastic has been gouged and the plastic is actually like swooping up or whatever. I'm just kind of smoothing all of that out. Not much, just a little bit. All right, guys, I ordered a plastic welding gun here off of Amazon this week. It was like $26 or $25 or something like that. Next day shipping. Um, I got a spot back here in the bed. It looks like someone tried to take a hole saw and drill a hole into it. Let me get you a little bit closer here. I don't want sand or water or anything else to get in here. So I bought that particularly for this here, this application here. We're just going to try to put that back together the best we can. I've not taken out of here yet. We have the gun. And the gun has these little two... It was kind of hard to see here. Camera don't want to focus. It's got them two little holes in there, and uh, it's got a, a trigger uh, outlet here, 110 outlet. We have some some snips, I guess, to cut the ends of the plastic welding tabs off. Once it's done, we also have a little blade cutter, and uh, I guess these are the consumables. I reckon for this is kind of like a consumable here, kind of squiggly line there. I'm going to try to put those in that hole there. For the easiest thing that I've came to find out about this without reading the instructions is to place the consumable into the welder just like so. Once you uh, heat it up with the button here, stick it into the plastic. When you're removing it, uh, wait for it to cool down before you can remove it. Then the consumable will stay behind into the plastic. Because uh, I did multiple attempts thinking I can just put it in, pull it out. And um, actually, it looks like I've created more work for myself. So I'm going to keep doing what I've found out to be working so far. I got a consumable in there right now. It'll start glowing red when it gets really hot. Like so. Just gonna place it in here. I got the trigger held down. The reason I'm holding it down, every you know, you know that the trigger is held down because the light's still going. Okay, I'm just letting it try to burn as deep as I can get it in here. I'm gonna let it go here. We're gonna have to wait for it to cool down. This was probably great on like ATV plastics. Uh, the plastic on this bed is, is kind of thick here. Not sure if the different plastic materials make a difference either. It's uh, it's like 10:30, and I'm out here cleaning out my toolbox. I was uh, working out in front of my shed today. We were cleaning the uh, the bed to the Cushman. And I walked inside, put something in my toolbox, um, got something, went back out, started using it. Well, I, I just turned my air conditioner on in the shed. And mind you, I, I'm not an AC guy. I'm just a DIYer. Y'all know that, I've said it before. And I said, something don't, something don't smell right in the shop. And I'm getting a strong, strong chemical smell. And uh, it smells like rubbing alcohol. So I hop on Google, I Google, you know, why does my 
air conditioner smell like rubbing alcohol. You know, kind of paranoid. I just put it in. Like I said, I've never done one before. And uh, first link I come to, three signs your mini split could be going bad or three signs your air conditioner could be going bad. You know, it's kind of like when you you feel sick and you look up what's my symptoms and man, it could be some serious stuff. Well, that's what I go to. It goes straight to that. I call up a buddy of mine, uh, his wife in town. He's got his air conditioner company. And I said, uh, I said, I'm sorry. I said, I told her, I said, I knew we talked about y'all doing an air conditioner in my shop last year, but I was cheap and I didn't want to spend the money for y'all to do it. And I said, uh, I put an air conditioner in myself. I said, and now it smells like rubbing alcohol. She's first thing she says, was like Freon's leaking. And I was like, great. You know what I mean? The thing is, I, I pulled when, when I put my AC system in, I pulled vacuum on that AC um, three or four different times. Uh, the first time, uh, I didn't have the right, I didn't have the hoses in the right order. The second time I did it, um, the, there was a, a fitting that wasn't tight. The third time I did it, um, or the second time I was missing an adapter, so I ordered off of Amazon. The third time, the adapter wasn't tight. So I said I knew I only got one chance to release the Freon from the uh, mini split into the unit. So when I did so, I pulled vacuum, like it said, pull, pull vacuum 15 minutes, wait 15 minutes. Well, I waited 15 minutes on the third time. And then I waited an hour. Then I waited two hours. Well, I waited like a little, little over three and a half hours. Uh, the vacuum never leaked down or anything. So I went ahead and released it. Well, I went back out to a toolbox a day. You know, long story short, and you'll see there's a receipt in the toolbox and it looks like it's been wet i had rubbing alcohol in the toolbox and it turned over as soon as i turned the air conditioner on when i went in there to put a tool on there so i was smelling this thinking i had something wrong with the air conditioner well i turned it off and uh I found it about an hour later, and like I said, it's like 10.30 now, and um, I came out here just to clean the top of the box out, and just to go through the top of the box as well. Air conditioner's been running now for like an hour and a half. Don't, don't smell a thing in there, it's super cold. I wanna say it's probably, it's a little, it's, it's about, it's about 60, it's about 65 degrees out here and it's probably about 55 60 in there doesn't smell a thing you know doesn't smell a thing and doesn't stink so i really had my nerves worked up earlier while i was cleaning the bed but anyways that's what it was here is inside of yeah you get a strong whiff of it now y'all check this out let me dump this crap out of here look at how y'all can see that how wet it was oh my goodness strong smell of of uh rubbing alcohol here that's exactly what it smelled like so i'm gonna have to call them first thing in the morning and tell them do not come out here because i told her i said listen i'll pay somebody to come out here check it out go behind me make sure i did it right but now everything's good just thought it was kind of funny one of those kind of stories you know what i mean that Oh my God, something's wrong. I just did this. So anyways, long story short, we're good. And then tomorrow, we're going to get back out here and we're going to try to uh, lay some ch -ch -ch onto the bed. So I want to get this thing right here kind of kind of sanded down. Um, when I was doing that awful job of plastic repair last night, um, I noticed there's some, it looks like somebody had also Try to spray some paint or something in here. I'm gonna try to get that out as well. I'm uh, just gonna take a wire brush to the bed and uh, we just wanna get it as clean as we can get it.
So as you see, we have the Raptor protective coating bed liner kit. We bought the black uh, four bottle, one gallon kit. I went ahead and bought some Bulldog of Haitian Promoter as well. I'll put links to both of these down in the description below if you're wanting to do a golf cart or you know, a truck bed or, or whatever. Uh, this it comes with the gun as well. So the reason I'm doing this, this utility bed has seen us better days. We did a a plastic weld job on the back. There's still some holes on that that I would like to fill. Hopefully this would fill it if I can't find any plastic to put inside those holes there. Now, to replace this bed with a brand new one would be too expensive. This was around 130, 150 bucks right here for both of these together. Um, we're gonna do the outside of the bed. We're gonna do the back of the bed. We're gonna do the inside of the bed, the top all down in here as well. I might do, I might shoot some across the bottom. However, the bottom's not really too hurt, but as you can see, it's really scratched up in here. I understand this is a utility bed. I understand we're gonna be working to uh, maybe, you know, hole and rock or, or whatever. But at the same time, this is still a golf cart and I want it to look good. So that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. And uh, it's not much more to say, but let's get started. So they're calling for rain today in about three and a half, four hours. We're gonna paint this outside, or Raptor it outside. I've removed the golf cart from the shed and put it in the garage. So after this right here dries for let's say an hour or so, we're gonna drag everything into the uh, shed and leave it for 24 hours. Do the same thing with the tailgate. First thing we need to do is uh, put a good coat of this uh, Bulldog adhesion promoter onto the golf cart. Sounds like a lot of things is going on uptown. Let's get started. All right, so the Raptor is a two part system. The instructions said that uh, it would come with a little measuring cup. It did not come with a measuring cup. The last time I did this, we just poured the hardener into it until it reached this line here. Then we closed the top, shook it up for a couple of minutes. Then we started spraying. I'm gonna do the same thing with it. Uh, this is a custom coat gun. It came with this. It came with a regulator. I have it set up for about 60 PSI. And the regulator is very finicky. So you just barely hit it and it drops it down like 10 PSI. So might have to play around with this and the nozzle as well a lot of people saying turn the nozzle out two or three times you know we'll play with all of that and go from there um so yeah i'm gonna get started i'm gonna just uh once i get this right here mixed up i'm gonna probably start inside the bed so we can kind of get some coverage on here then once we're done, we'll step back far away and we'll kind of spray a texture coat. Kind of want like a fine, uh, a, a fine look. With that being said, um, not sure what we're gonna get. It's supposed to be raining in about three hours. So if I can just get a coat on here and get it kind of dry, we're gonna pull it to the shop for tonight. So that's what we're gonna do. And the Raptor from looking down here is about right here. So I think that's gonna give us enough um, uh, fluid from here to there for hardener. on here and mix it up for two minutes two three minutes and just go back and forth hey Siri mm -hmm. set a uh, timer for two minutes, two minutes. Down. so I just set a timer on the phone for two minutes 
It'll go for a little bit longer than what we've been going for. It should be okay. Two minutes is up. Here we go. I'm trying to get this right here on here the best we can without cross threading it. I believe it's on. Let's see what it looks like. Try to run it so we can cover up some of them holes. We'll come back and do a uh, kind of like a like a mess coat later. So I started another timer for two minutes. So far, I think it looks pretty good. We still need to do that side of the bed over there. As you can see, I did run it right there in the middle. I meant to run it to see if we could get uh, most of that filled in. It looks like crap from here. We're gonna start along that bed there, get that side of the bed. We're gonna do the outsides of the bed next. When we were spraying at that kind of an angle there, we were getting these ridges and the right side of the ridge. So we need to do the left side of the ridge as well on the bed. So. So the bed is fully dry and it's sitting over here on some uh, saw horses and uh, we're going to try to get the bed where well, I'm going to try to get the bed on here by myself and um, put it in place. I'm not putting the, the latch that goes across it that keeps it in place. I'm not putting that on just yet because there's something I kind of want to try and uh, if we have to put it on we will. So in other words, let's just get started. So I went ahead and put some I got some of an old towel, an old t-shirt, because I really don't want to scratch this fine rattle can paint job frame. Almost there. Okay, that there, and this here. Okay. What do you think? How do you like that? I think it looks pretty good. The Raptor turned out pretty good, especially on the sides, the bottom of the bed. But remember, I did run this right here to try to fill in some of those holes. So yes, that looks like 
doo doo. But for the most part, I think it's turning out pretty good. And I really like the texture and I like how it's uniform piece of plastic there. So last week we put the rear fenders on the Cushman and I ordered those fenders straight from the TXT or I actually ordered them straight from EasyGo, um, which is weird about it. Once you click onto the website and you click uh, parts manuals or whatever, and you can go through the parts manuals of whatever vehicle you want to order, like an OEM part for. Once you get to these uh, fenders, you can order the fenders with the tail light opening. So that's more work for them to cut that tail light opening out. They were like $33 versus the ones with no opening, they were over a hundred dollars more. To me, that makes no sense. However, I went with it, okay? Um, I don't think the original ones had the tail light opening, so, so I wanted to make sure we had a spot for the tail lights, and plus it's gonna give it a more uniform fit, you know, exactly uh, where it goes, looks good, all of that. Anyways, the downside of this is on the EasyGo website, the tail lights they had to offer were incandescent tail lights, and I want to say they were 70 or $80. I'm not sure if that was for a pair, it may have been, but I jumped on Amazon after I got these right here, fenders installed, and I ordered some LED lights, not knowing if they would fit or not. However, today, we're gonna to see if they're gonna fit. So basically what I did is once the fenders were installed, I took a measurement, got on Amazon, and uh, went for it. I think these right here lights were only like $20, or $23 or something like that for the pair and their LED with a turn signal. So it's the three wire kit. We're not gonna wire them up in today's video. We're just gonna just get them installed and make sure they fit. So let's get to it. They come with this plastic stuff here just to protect it. Uh, the light pops out of here. This is how it mounts. We're gonna do away with the light for just a minute. So it mounts with this uh, rubber uh, gasket here. That's very, very tight. I hope we don't have a problem with these lights. Hope they go in just fine. So there's a groove on the inside of these lights where they fit into this rubber housing. You don't want to push them all the way through. Is that in all the way? I guess that's in all the way. It looks like I got some extra gap down in here. Then again, we are taking a chance when we order these versus ordering the, the right ones. Okay, I just pulled the light down some. I think that looks a lot better. All right, what do you guys think? I think that looks a lot better. Um, let me show you the underside of it here. What do you guys think? I think it looks pretty good. So they mount and fit pretty decent. So we're not gonna wire these up today. We're gonna wait to the wiring video. I just wanted to go ahead and stick them in place to make sure they fit. They do. Uh, had to do a little extra like uh, working, you know, there's rubber around it a little bit more just to make it, you know, perfect as you can get it. The lights only mount with that piece of rubber and that rubber is also the grommet. So it's pretty much uh, held into place with like, um, almost like friction and compression at the same time i think they look pretty good so i'm out taking the roof off of the uh uprights here uh it's taking a t27 up top a 10 millimeter up underneath the bottom around the roll cage 
There's five of these total we have to take off. I still need to rapture the uh, back of the tailgate and I think I'm gonna go ahead and rapture the roof as well while we're working at it. So here's the Cushman roof here that goes over the roll cage. Here's the tailgate. We weren't able to um, coat the outside of the tailgate yesterday. However, we did clean it. We just need, still need to apply the adhesion promoter to it. And we're gonna go ahead and spray it on the controller cover as well. So without further ado, let's get started. We don't have a lot of this left, this adhesion promoter, but we do have enough for these two pieces or three pieces, I believe. We're leaving this on here for a reason and uh, that'll be explained later on in an upcoming part of the series. So we just uh, adhesion promoted those plastic pieces there. See I'm wearing gloves today, being smart. Yesterday I didn't. I got wrapped around my hands. It took a while to get it off, but I did get it off. Side of the day, I'm gonna do this right here. My dog got into the, to the box of gloves and you may have seen them in the backyard earlier, but got a timer going. It's going for two minutes. Get this right here mixed up so we can spray these parts here.
So this right here, bottom piece is only here, to, I believe, to keep the tailgate as rigid as possible. And uh, we went ahead and sanded it and painted it, bolting it together before we put it back onto the cart. So I got the, uh, I don't know if you'd call this a roll cage or uh, the tubing for the top or the roof supports. Let's just call it roof supports. It's definitely not a rollover cage. So we got it on these saw horses here. First thing we need to do is to clean this really well. Once we clean it, I'm gonna try to scotch right the entire thing and give it the old rattle can Krylon Fusion three in one. Looks pretty good. So it may be kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna take a drill bit here. I'm gonna pop a hole into here and in the center of here for some future upgrades so we can run wires through the tubes and uh, you know have a more concealed look. So I'm just trying to go to the center here. So I got half of a red scotch bright pad. I just took a full pad, cut it in half. We're gonna scuff this entire bar up. Then we're gonna hit it with a three in one. When I paint it, I'm just gonna paint over these nuts and bolts here since all of that's gonna be underneath the plastic of the roof. You're not gonna be a seat anyway. So that's what I'm doing in this step. Shine should be gone. Not sure if y'all can see that or not, but I went ahead and knocked down just about all the shine that was on these bars here. Next, what we're gonna do is go ahead, I'm gonna wipe them down one more time with alcohol to remove any of the dust from the scuffing pad. Check that out, y'all. No runs, no drips, no errors. All in one. That means I can do it. I don't know if y'all can see, but I think the roof and the bars turned out pretty good. It's been about 18 hours and they're dry. Maybe a little longer. I think it looks really good, especially with that top there. However, when I was painting them, I forgot to paint these standoff pieces. So the paint usually takes, you know, 30 minutes to an hour to dry. I really wanted it to cure when I was painting this right here. However, I need to uh, scuff these up, shoot them, and wait about an hour before I put the stop on again. So, roll cage or uh, roof support, probably better terminology for that, is uh, painted, it's dry. Um, we got some new stainless hardware for everything. Got some 5 16th hardware, even for the rear. And uh, we got stainless. And I go ahead and I'm going to try to do this by myself. I might try to do the back bottom bolts on it, lean it back while I'm doing those, and then slowly lean it forward since I'm by myself. Not uh, sure. Let's just see how this goes. I 
definitely do not want this close to the body while I'm putting it on. I don't want to, uh, I don't want to scratch the paint or anything. So it's not heavy. It's just, it's just awkward. get a ladder in order to put the top on. Definitely need to clean the underside of the top. You know what, might as well just do that now. So we're inside the shed. Uh, I'm gonna clean the top in here. Once it's clean, we're gonna carry it out since it's on the little rolling seat and wash it off like that. The sun tends to uh, dry up the, uh, the spray solution, so we're just gonna do it in here, carry it up there, and then wash it off out there. top all cleaned up it looks a lot better than it did we're just going to go ahead and uh, throw it back on here oh yeah looks a lot better I'm gonna go ahead and bolt the top back on off camera it's just gonna take too long to do it on camera but I think it looks pretty good and uh, not sure. Might be seeing the top again very soon. So one thing that's really bugging me are these two brake cables, dirty as they are, and they're hanging down along with the uh, F and R switch uh, cable itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to clean these cables and wire tie them up as best I can. I'm gonna just try to clean them with some Windex here. not even the cables this is just like a protective cover here all right guys so here's the cart so in this episode, I didn't get done as much as I planned on. However, in my opinion, I think it looks great. We have a lot more to do in some upcoming episodes, so stay tuned for those. And uh, I'm not going to spoil it for you guys, but I have some things planned. For the past couple of weeks now, I have been uploading on Instagram. It's underscore Fentertainment underscore. And uh, when I'm working on something in the shop or garage or whatever, I usually snap a picture so you kind of know what's coming. On some upcoming videos so if you're on instagram go over there and give us a follow on there and tiktok i'm really not i'm really not sold on tiktok i do like making some videos for tiktok but it's uh fentertainment on tiktok as well or ryan fenters so if you have either of those platforms go over there give us a follow uh with that being said i appreciate you guys watching if you made it this far thank you and uh, if you like this video drop a like if you don't like it drop a negative it don't matter to me I'm having fun and I hope you guys are enjoying some content. With that being said, we'll see y'all later.